Not talking about who's going to wind up winning the MVP. I'm talking about right now. This shows what I mean about Embiid. Okay. Embiid, at this moment, if I had to choose an MVP, I'm giving it to Joel Embiid. Look what just happened to the Lakers. And I know mm -hmm. they're on a road trip, and they haven't lost, everyone loses on the road eventually and all that. Who didn't play last night? They can't do it without AD. They lost to a bad team. A bad team. Now look at Embiid. Remember I told you, LeBron has played all the games. Embiid's missed four games. So you're like, okay, if they're comparable in value, obviously the guy who played four more games is more valuable, except that hasn't hurt, this, hurt the Sixers in the standings. They're number one in the Eastern Conference. By the way, the Lakers aren't anymore in the Western Conference. And what happened with and without Embiid? With that four games, it hasn't hurt the Sixers in the conference. But that four game shows is what they are with them and without them. They're 0 4. They got stomped out by the same team that just beat the Lakers, who they beat with Embiid. So Embiid is the whole shooting match for the Sixers. With him, they're dominant. They just beat the Lakers head to head. Yeah. And by the way, Embiid was giving them the business to the point where they took him out of the game. LeBron shoved him when he was up in the air. Gasol gave him a little help from behind, didn't give him a place to land. And B came down so hard, he really wasn't the same after that. Sixers still beat him. They, they, he, they hung tough enough to beat him, but the Lakers came back on him. Embiid's value is so pronounced to the Sixers. LeBron is great. There's no question. He's up there. But he didn't have AD, and they lost to one of the worst teams in basketball. If you're, it, you're, you're, you're splitting hairs here. But right now, Embiid's the MVP of the league. <sighs> I'm closing my eyes right now because I don't like when you give me a reason to come to the defense of LeBron James. It really bothers me. You see, I'm one of those people that believe that LeBron James, listen, I'm, I'm, I think LeBron James gets enough praise. You know, that's why I have to put up the ticket. Great husband, great father. Put it up? You know, I think we should put it up. I mean, great father, great husband, great businessman. You know, very philanthropic. I mean, the, the dude, he's unbelievable. Okay? And I think that it's appalling to me that people in his camp are disgusted at the fact that, oh, my God, it is an insult to call him the second greatest player in the history of the sport ever created. I mean, my God, to call him number two. I mean, <laughs> you're just stabbing oh, him in the heart. Oh, my God, two, what an insult. PK. You know what I'm saying? What Never mind what you're saying about yeah. Jordan if you call LeBron exactly. number one. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in this case, ah, there it is. This is the kind of stuff. This is a great husband, great father, a generous philanthropist. I mean, this is a director, a producer. I mean, the guy's phenomenal. I mean, just put it all up there. Let's make sure we get that out the way. But in this particular situation, Hollywood power and broker. It, that's right, Hollywood, Hollywood power broker. Put that up. It's all there. It's all, all there. Around it's all there. It's all there. The resume oh is impeccable. God, okay. That? But let me tell you something. In this particular instance, <laughs> this is what LeBron, LeBron is just. It, this should disgust him, Mac, your take. Here's why. Because we got a headline there and we're talking about LeBron James in question, the MVP and all. It's, it's one game. And guess what? It's Detroit. You're sitting up there. They're to a bad team. Oh, Max, that's what happens. Do you know the worst team in NBA history actually won nine games? You realize that? Worst team in history actually won nine games. It's Philadelphia 76 as many years ago. What I'm saying to you is this. It happens. And Anthony Davis doesn't play last night. At least 10 dudes played 13 minutes. You go in there against a weak team. You take it for granted. You take a night off. It's the regular season. If this were a season that started on time, Second to back to this, back. Would be, this would be December. Yeah, we care. Second this, to back this to back on the road. This would be approaching New Year's Eve. That's what this would be right now if the season had started re as regularly scheduled. All I'm saying is, listen, LeBron has graduated to a point where it is so grotesquely unfair to look at him in an early regular season game and measure him in any way. This brother is about, you know, April, May, and June, literally or figuratively speaking, the postseason. That's what he gets measured by. To me, what's alarming, if I'm Anthony Davis, here's what I would say to Anthony Davis, my brother. You're finally being recognized with the greatness that you deserve as one of the top five players on the planet. If LeBron James at age 36 in his 18th season is playing more games and more minutes than you, we got a problem. You should, that should not be happening. 
because what LeBron is doing and what I believe he should be teaching Anthony Davis is that it's one thing when you're a star or a superstar quality talent. It's another thing when you're the headline. See, I love for Kobe, God rest his soul. I love for MJ. I love for the elite superstars like LeBron. He's included in that list. That, I will put him on that list. In terms of being a headliner and consistently answering the call, showing up to work when you don't want to because you know everybody's watching and they're coming to see well, you. Okay. And I'm saying it's a little you, unfair to AD. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm not being unfair to AD because I'm not calling him out for anything. I'm saying keep in mind AD, that's the responsibility that you have now that you are a champion playing alongside LeBron. That's all I'm saying. I'm Kobe not saying Bryant. he did anything wrong yet. I'm just saying let's keep that in mind moving forward for AD. Kobe Bryant and LeBron James off the top of games. Like Jordan played 82 games every year. When it wasn't 82, it was 81 or 80. But most of the modern players play in the 70s. This was the second of back-to-back -back on a road trip. That's why I'm not killing LeBron, of course. And, and Stephen A., we're not talking about who's the best player in the game. We're not talking about the, the championship or who's eventually going to win the MVP. I've been making the case. I'm just, I'm just MVP tracker, regular season which I don't even like that award. I don't think it's that meaningful, but people care about it. MVP tracker, regular season, at this moment, if you had to vote, Embiid. And, and last night was, you know, it is close. You say you shouldn't judge him on this little kind of information, but when it's that close, every little bit counts. They just lost to the Pistons without AD. According to Caesars, LeBron leads uh, the odds in terms of winning MVP, and Joel Embiid is third. But there's still a very long way to go. We will leave it there when we come back here on First tonight's game but Coos was just talking about how you guys have been extra cautious uh, during the pandemic you know a, a, an outbreak can move a team from a top seed to a six seven seed something like that and I just wondered uh, as you get to the second third fourth fifth city on a trip does does that mental toll does that accumulate does that get more difficult how do you kind of keep the team on focus there throughout throughout this unique situation um, because it's still work to be done. I mean, we still, you know, there's games we play, be work to be done. We got to continue to get better. And um, you can't really, um, you know, get your mind into the grasp of uh, how many days you've been on the road or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, every team does it. Every team hits a long road trip. And as you know, professionals, you know, we got to keep our minds fresh, keep our bodies fresh as much as we can um, to go out there and uh, put together a complete 48 minute game or as close to 48 minutes. So well, obviously we haven't done it the last couple of games. Um, and uh, we just got to be better on Saturday. Just basketball-wise, did you notice anything about that second half, the, the biggest thing that stood out? Uh, I mean, I think Detroit played extremely well tonight, and then we didn't play well. We didn't play well at all. Um, like, our legs got to us a little bit on the second half of a back-to-back. Um, so, um, you know, that was the result of it. Dan? Hey, LeBron. Um, you, you, you mentioned the legs. I mean, you got off to such a hot start in this game. Is that kind of what you think turned for you tonight? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, you know, I think early on I got it going. Um, and then I, I, I still, at the end of the day, still got to get my teammates involved. Um, you know, even with my scoring early, um, you know, we, we didn't have uh, many, you know, assists and things of that nature. So I want to try to implement my guys, get my guys involved in the game. And, um, I definitely missed some shots that, I'm, that I know I'm accustomed to making, but it had nothing to do with my legs. Kyle? Hey, Frank has talked a couple times about the depth of his team and how tricky it is to, to kind of find minutes for everybody who deserves them uh, and how it can kind of force some uh, maybe non-conventional lineups. Um, how much do you feel that? How much do you feel that you personally are, are still adjusting to some of the different groups out there and, and – uh, where, where would you kind of like to be um, soon in, in the, that development? Uh, we're, I'm definitely, and we're definitely um, all adjusting um, to playing with different lineups, um, you know, and, and logging minutes with lineups that, you know, one game you might not log with or could be a few games in a row. So, you know, it's kind of learning on the fly. And I think we're all learning on the fly because of the lack of practice time. You know, um, you know, with this season, it's very difficult to kind of, you know, get those practice minutes on the floor and know what, what works and what does not work. Um, just very strange with that. Um, so, you know, our, our, a lot of our games are also just like, you know, big practices for us too. We, we have to learn on the fly and coach is still learning different lineups and seeing what, what combinations work, what combinations don't work. And 
Uh, myself, I'm out there playing with certain lineups, certain lineups I don't play with, certain lineups I do play with. So I log a lot of minutes with, you know, you know, guys that you know may not have logged with, uh, you know, in, in a couple games. But like I said, it's all a learning experience, and all of us trying to figure it out. If Ron, how do you get comfortable and stay patient with that challenge or that circumstance of needing? the games to be the practices because it, the reality of the schedule doesn't allow for actual practices? Um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Uh, Dan, I think you have a follow-up. Yeah, LeBron, um, you guys have Boston on Saturday, um, and that, that's kind of one of those rivalries in sports that transcends even the country. I, I, I guess – What's it like to be a part of something so big like Laker Celtics? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Just knowing the history, um, you know, Laker Celtics across, um, uh, I mean, throughout the course of, uh, you know, this league and uh, what it means to, uh, what it means to this league, the history of this league, um, you know, and just seeing some of the biggest games, some of the biggest rivalries, some of the best players that ever played this game to be a part of this rivalry was a pretty cool thing, you know, just learning the history. It's not like I didn't personally grow up watching them. Um, obviously, I was, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit too young in the '80s. Um, you know, and then they had, you know, rekindled a little bit in, in the 2000, uh, late 2000s when, you know, COVID and them guys were going against KG and those guys. But, um, you know, it's just it's pretty cool. And right now, it's different. Um, you, we, without the Boston fans um, and without the Laker faithful, it, 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 it's not the same. It won't feel the same on Saturday. Um, it's going to feel great to play another game and play against a very good team, but it won't have that rivalry feel. Just, you know, our, the fans are so much a part of that rivalry, if you could just imagine, you know, and just go back and watch those games, how how key the fans were um, in all the battles over the, course of this, or over the course of the years. All right, we'll wrap with Rachel. Ron, when is it in the cycle of games and off days and stuff and a road trip that you feel – the most tired because we talked a lot about uh, how short the off season was, how much energy it was going to take. And you get to the beginning of the season and there's kind of a burst of we're starting, but you're on a long road trip like this. When is it that you feel it? Is it right after games? Is it on the off days? Uh, I don't get tired. I don't feel tired. Um, you know, I get my sleep, I get my rest, but uh, I have a, 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 a lot of energy. I don't really, I don't get tired. Um, and I don't, I don't even, my mindset never gets to a point where it's like, okay, this is a long road trip. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Um, I don't, I don't even, I don't even think about that. You know, when we have our games, I'm ready to go. When we're not playing, you know, I have an opportunity to rest and get my body 